Welcome to Opulent Mobility at the Makery. This ninth annual exhibit brought 18 different artists together to tell their wildly varied disability stories. They told their stories through photography, sculpture, digital art, fiber art, and song. Lisa Marita Pate's sculpture, GMOA Pulp, is made of woven paper in a deconstructed cone shape that's got white mostly with little tints of different colors at the edges and toward the bottom. We then move on to Joy Murray's painting, Desired Seem to Expand. In this painting, a nude woman is sitting in a wheelchair with swirls of blue and green and gold around her, wrapped around her as a cape and flowing down her lap. Behind her appears to be starry, starry sky. There are little points of exacto blades mixed in with the paint. We then move on to Celeste Tooth's sculpture, Nerves Below Surface. This acrylic sculpture is shaped somewhat like a shield in blue, red, and green with a glowing light directly in the center. If you look closely, it almost appears like a face, perhaps an animal, perhaps a demon. Then we move to Joy Murray's second painting, based on Klimt's The Kiss. In this one, there's a seated woman in a wheelchair and a kneeling man with dark skin who embraces her. They are backed with gold with little patches of color and stand under an archway made of green leaves and vines with small red flowers. Then we move to Cat Chuddy's Anxiety Suit, which in the exhibit was hung on the wall, suspended, but can also be worn by a person. This suit is really closer to a life vest made of lumpy pieces of red that are festooned with little strands of pearls of various sizes. All of the red pieces are in lumps that are attached together. Next to this is Abigail Stockinger's digital print, Living With My Disability Life. This shows a young woman with pale blue tinted skin with a red sacred heart on her chest that is stuck through the syringe. The woman has a halo that is big and pink and filled with a catheter tube and varying sizes of prescription pill bottles. In the back corner of the gallery is a sculpture of the fairy Melusine. Melusine is eight feet tall. She is a multicolored female sculpture with fishtails for legs that is built into a walker. She holds a rolling cane, has wings and a crown, and a portal on her chest shows the coconut milk container she is stuffed with. Across from Melusine is Austin Wobetkin's self-portrait. This digital work also has some elements of animation to it. It is a portrait of the head of a young man, pale-skinned with a mustache goatee and glasses. The head is surrounded with swirls of psychedelic colors and butterflies, and the animation takes the form of little puffs of smoke right below his chin. Right next to the self-portrait is Rachel Ungerer's painting, Disabled Drag is Joy. In this painting, a turquoise-haired drag performer sits in a wheelchair and dances. After that are two photos from Priya Ray's series, Fully Tilted Back, which are taken with her when she is fully tilted back in her wheelchair. The first one, Fully Tilted Back 3, shows a copper ceiling with green walls painted with different floral aspects, looking up at a lamp that seems to be surrounded with metal twigs. Right beneath that is fully tilted back four. And in this one, which is almost entirely dark around the edges, with an arch of lights and an inset shape that is an angle at the top, straight right angle at the top, and then strange little angles off to one side. This is looking up at a lit ceiling with an inset alcove. Next, we come up on Julie Forbush's fabric pieces, Pain and Suffer. Pain is triangularly shaped. It's made out of different pieces of, and colors of purple with off-white letters and edging. The lettering reads Pain. 
It's a little bit hard to see. It's intended to be a little bit fuzzy. And the triangular shape is a classic one that you would see, say, raising a flag at a ball game. Supper is also in the triangular shape. It's much longer and thinner than pain. It's done in multicolors, in tans and pale reds and pinks, with burgundy as the edging and in the lettering that reads suffer. All of the quilting is beautifully done. After this, we move on to Ellen Mansfield's print, Breathe In, Out. This is a picture of a young woman, pale-skinned, surrounded by a halo of trees and in her chest, which seems to be an open cross-section of lungs, there are branches with flowers. She holds one hand above the other, and the middle fingers are touching. Then we move on to Celeste Tooth's second sculpture in here, Paroxysms of Access, No Admission. This filigree-like work on plywood that is painted red is almost like a rib cage with nerve endings spouting out from the shoulders and off of the side. We then move on to Bronte Grimm's Devour. In this photo print, a person who is painted almost entirely white, including their hair, holds up tiny red skulls in their hands with red tipped fingers. One of those skulls is being held up almost to their mouth as if ready to take a bite. We then go to Barb and Karen by Elizabeth Radchart. In this picture, two women, blonde haired, pale skinned, in wheelchairs, lean their backs against each other and their heads and smile widely. The person on the left has a black and white striped sweater with rainbow cuffs. The one on the right has rainbows across her chest and lower arm. In Emily Taroni's collage, handled on a purple, blue, pink and white book called Handling the Handicapped. Two hands reach out from the sides and a larger arm reaches in, cradling a person who seems to have a cap on and a nightgown, holding onto the arm for all her life. We then come to Ash Hagerstrand's FMT, or Fecal Microbial Transplant. This sculpture slash photo, I'm not sure how to describe it, is surrounded by 3D printing of the nude backs of two people and arms mixed in with what seem to be intestines. Center is a highly colored image of a digestive system with a small gray person. After that, we come to Patricia Fortledge's Still Lifes, Elixirs and On the Menu. In elixirs, there's a serving tray with a napkin and napkin ring and three fancy drinks in fancy glassware. One pale pink, one pale blue, and one peach colored with what might be two olives on a skewer. In the background, there's a very faded image of different medication bottles and some leaves. In on the menu, against a dark background, there's a vase full of flowers, a jug, a plate of fruit, and a cutting board that is covered with medication and different medical equipment like gauze, bandages, and what seem to be prescription pill bottles. Last but certainly not least is Monica Mark's steampunk wheelchair. This is a wheelchair that she designed so that she could go to cosplay events when she can no longer walk so easily. The seat is covered with golden and orange and red gear printed fabric. There is a parasol attached to the top in red and burgundy with gold trim and strange brass and gold painted devices coming off of the back of it, which might be smokestacks or gramophone horns. The soundtrack to this exhibit was composed by Tom Peters. He created music that can be experienced through the feet and bass frequencies so that you can enjoy it if you are deaf or hard of hearing.
Thanks so much for joining me for this walkthrough of Opulent Mobility at the Makery. Thanks also to all the artists, allies, and accomplices who helped make it possible.